So let's look at how we make a spectrometer, how we put together a spectrometer, and the comparison between an absorption spectrometer versus something using uh, that we want to use to measure emission spectra. Spectra. So one of the big differences is that we need two monochrometers. Uh, we need to first select the color of light that's going into our sample to excite it in the first place, and then we need a monochrometer to select the specific color of light coming out of the sample. Uh, so we still have a light source, and that light source is going to produce light that goes into our monochrometer number one. All right, and that'll pick the color of light that goes onto our sample. Let me draw this nicely here. All right, so the light will come into our sample, and then the this will excite the molecules, which then emit light via fluorescence or phosphorescence. And that light will go in all directions, and we pick one of those directions and we pick a direction that's 90 degrees to the light coming in and send that light through our second monochrometer. We often collect this with a lens or something like that. And then that gets sent onto our detector. All right, so we have two different wavelengths here. We have the wavelength of our excitation, so lambda EX, you know, what wavelength are we using to excite the molecules up to that upper energy level? And then we have a second wavelength of the emission, lambda EM, and this is the emission. All right, so one question I want you to think about is why do we measure at 90 degrees? What's the purpose of, of why don't we just measure it in a straight line? Um, we'll talk about it in class. So. I want you to think about that. That's not something I'm going to answer right now. Or you can look at your textbook. It's in there as well. But anyway, we have two monochrometers here because we need to select both the color of light. We need to, the, the right color of light to excite our sample, uh, whichever you know, molecule we're trying to look at in that sample. And then once we excite it, we want to find also the wavelength at which we get the maximum amount of emission. We want the signal to be as strong as, excuse me, strong as possible and not observe the other wavelengths that are present. So there are two different ways we can measure the, um, sorry, I just got distracted there a second. There are two different ways we can measure our spectra. Uh, one is that we can, we can fix the excitation wavelength, meaning that we, we pick one specific value and just leave it at that. And then we scan over using our second monochrometer different values of lambda em right a different emission and what this does is this allows us to find so this is what's known as an emission spectrum and this lets us find where we get max maximum emission of light what wavelength because um, you know, depending on the exact values of the energy levels, you, you don't know exactly where you're going to get maximum emission of light. <coughs> uh, so you're seeing the fluorescence occurring as a function of wavelength at which that fluorescence occurs. Um, the other type of scan that we can take is where we do the opposite. We fix the emission wavelength, so maybe we found where that maximum is, and then we scan the excitation wavelength. This, lets, this is almost like an absorption spectrum. Um, so this is what's known as an excitation spectrum. And this lets us see where we get the most, uh, most absorption of light that leads to emission. All right, so this is excitation spectrum. And this is similar, though not exactly the same, but similar to an absorption spectrum. Uh, the thing that makes it different is that you still have, you know, only some fraction of your molecules uh, emit light. So it's not exactly one-to-one -one correspondence, but pretty close. Um, and this lets you see where you get the maximum amount of uh, absorption of light to, that leads to emission. Uh, and so you, 
generally when you're doing uh, when you're figuring things out to figure out where you'd like to take your measurements, you need to do both of these types of scans. And then once you've figured this out, you often don't need to scan the wavelength. You pick where you have the maximum uh, emission, maximum excitation, uh, and use both of those, and that's where you would do your measurement. Uh, but this lets you figure out where that is. Uh, so in the next video, we'll look at an example of what these spectra look like uh, for an example molecule.